The explanation of the second piece of evidence sabotaged by the police is currently underway and uses multiple sections. In this section, narration leaves the INS saga, and switches to the subject of global eugenics. Presented here as an undated topic, it is a recent development. I believe it is ethical only to make all eugenic reforms public. What happens behind closed doors between two people is not the same as some eugenic policy that was born in the heart of a university system and now infiltrates the whole mankind planning to displace all alternatives. My first meeting with this distinguished professor Ron Edge took place in 2001 to 2003 as detailed above. Back in Canada, around 1998, I used to go to the University of Calgary where I went to use the library which closed late, since I was lonely. There were posters all over the place at the university. They said the professors wanted female bonding to be globally adopted. This would help women to develop a spine, by respecting each other's opinions than relying on men. Many gals of my generation internationally dislike being manipulated. Nobody tells me to hang out with women or men. I want to do as I please. Forcing me to turn to girls will not result in me respecting them. This coercion only tells me a story about women's poverty, which would have gone unnoticed if romantic Romeos had not insisted I take her. Men are using violence and tyranny to couple me to women, since she is a mental inferior, whose inferiority the men find attractive for mating. This is an offense. It is counterproductive behavior that merits God's punishment upon exceeding limits. But these are not morally wrong for the modern woman who offers little resistance to indoctrination. She therefore does not suffer from indoctrination. She does not understand doctrines any more than a condom can appreciate a fine piece of music. Just as an acidic solution turns litmus paper red every time, the presence of female privates guarantees faith and moral dependency towards the mental health system, which is nothing but a bunch of man-made concepts, to lie to her gently. Faith in those concepts makes a woman confident. She loses her dependence on men and is now dependent on what does not have a physical form the mental health system. The modern woman hero's innermost feelings are shared with a woman. That woman is a service provider of paid and unpaid listening or is in one of the various cousins of the mental health service. This means women's contact with men is mainly on the genital level, and no other. This also means a person who does not have the intelligence of an average man a person who is an academic failure from an early age, is able to sustain the emotional needs of the entire humanity, taking into account only humans who possess female genitalia. This newly created fact is a feather in the cap of the intellectually challenged people. What fact? The fact that half the human race are satisfied having no mental encounters but with herself to have mental intimacy. But this fact is not a fact at all, it is grossly fraudulent. Also the above-mentioned description of modern women is an idealized model by theorists. These theorists want to try and establish that a dud who has female genitals can fill every crack in every human who has female genitals. If this were true, it throws male intelligence in the garbage, and intelligence in the garbage. Someone who understands nothing can be leader, master, and mentor to the wise, the educated, to everyone. A sex expert who injects intimacy juices into the brains of a woman, giving that woman a feeling of fulfillment in life. Sure this is really happening and also happening at British universities, but does not cover everyone. Lovers of this man-made truth, are desperate to believe that Einstein needed assistance from a mental health provider woman, that some prime minister they absolutely hate suffers from, or did suffer from a mental disorder. If you look at what has been going on globally since 1998, we can see that government of every country I know has arranged for female bonding to occur. They have created and funded organizations where women can meet women as part of some pseudo-profession to share their all with women. These women receive nothing but glory and praise in the media. This is not by accident. I believe this is global eugenics that was born in the hearts of professors and learned committees of North America same as what happened in the days of Adolf Hitler. The University of Calgary professors of physics told me around 1998 to 1999 they wanted a 50-50 gender ratio of women in physics. When a man and women were equally qualified in physics applied for jobs or courses, 
they were going to give the position to the woman 100% of the time, to achieve their 50-50 goal. A few years down the road, in 2001 to 2003, when I met Dr. Edge at CCC. He said the real reason why women could not do physics was it interferes with the way they copulate. The American professors were contemplating giving physics education to grandmothers, who are finished with copulation, he said. That was the global woman in physics scheme in an embryonic stage. Now folklore of India and other has led me to compare this disability of a woman with a person who has two legs, but can use only one at a time. This means she can hop on her left leg or her right one, but she cannot use both legs and walk. The woman's system is temperamentally unsuitable for physics. She refuses when asked. If they force her, she has a nasty side effect, which is down below. She suffers from copulatory dysfunction and is suited only to live as a nun. This does not happen because men will not have her. Because she was stretched into something that was unnatural for her, something cracked up inside. So now in the 21st century, these professors have found an environmental trick to keep women in physics before they have become grandmas, widows, and nuns. This principle is to frequently make references to a woman's sex. Like every five minutes. This principle has not just been used in physics. Every scheme in the world today uses this principle to combat the harmful side effect women will face if they are stretched and inducted into professions traditionally belonging to men. It is like blowing air from below to keep a hovercraft afloat. It is like blowing puffs of air at frequent intervals to keep the hovercraft afloat when they refer to a woman's sex every few minutes, sometimes not an exaggeration. There is this thing where the men keep repeating the phrase woman in physics or in whatever. They also keep repeating what happens if a woman this and a woman that. Grouping women with women coercively, and punishing women who don't output women's behavior are part of the diverse methods of sprinkling women all over the place. Look, there is a cryptocurrency called smooth love portions. They are, I believe, sprinkling smooth woman portions. They are building a eugenically controlled environment slated to become the whole planet. They want their virtual truths to become real truths by exterminating all people who are a living example of violation of their created, man-made truths. I will give a crude and simple analogy which is not exact. A theorist who has much following from the community proposes a theory that all humans have the same skin color. This man-made theory is untrue. But there is a practical advantage for some people if it were true. The theorist gains popularity through his new finding, from people who profit from it. Another hypothetical example is the case where a woman in physics will only study physics if incense is burned in the room. We want her to study physics, and so does the government, who will do anything to make women progress. We buy the most expensive incense we can find on the planet. How the arrangement of frequent sexual reference to women works is that the woman needs to preserve her primary identity as a bedroom person. Woman grouping, the applauding of female behaviors, putting men down, and referencing women sexually all the time are, according to me, the frequent puffs of air that keep the hovercraft floating. Another example is what I saw in Cuddy's locally in late 2023. A woman had joined the customer service and the men were manipulating me to speak only to her. This according to me is not the woman being stupid or clever. It is that female handicap physicists are so keen on manipulating and adjusting. Women go to women is a motto that makes women in physics tick, not just in physics. They throw themselves on women such as me, and act as if they have knowledge and I am an ignoramus. They stand tall and everyone else who is a woman is coming out as a dwarf. When they see a woman carrying out some task unaided, they become excited. I feel their response, which I do not understand, looks like they are salivating with desire and eagerness. Don't misunderstand as I am not suggesting they are lesbians. I also found the above behaviors in a woman who created Fantastic Female Fridays. The woman asked to work for a financial company was talking on Fridays on subjects that are alien to the bedroom. 
Fantastic Female Fridays is a phrase she coined to act for herself. She was self-stimulating through her imagery to the public so to speak, so she could frequently bridge herself back to her primary identity, which is that of a bedroom person. Narration about my second piece of evidence sabotaged by the London Metropolitan Police in the UK takes up multiple sections. It is currently in progress. Narration now exits the subject of environmental eugenics and women in physics, and goes back to my friendship with Dr. Edge an eminent educator. I mean I was deported in 2004 and six months later entered the UK. My friendship with Dr. Edge continued and I feel I was lucky and blessed to have someone of his stature as my uncle so to speak. Her was an all-round mentor, not just in physics. My friendship with Dr. Edge continued after my deportation from the United States, which took place on May 7, 2004, and my entry into the UK, which took place on December 2, 2004. I lived in the UK until April 30, 2018. I do not remember which year Dr. Edge visited London, UK, to attend a conference, with his smart and university-educated missus, and I went to the Institute of Physics in London to see him. Back in the UK from 2004 I was expelled from the Institute of Physics in 2006 to 2007 for bringing them into disrepute. I was asked to report to some woman who let out a blood-curdling scream. Reporting to people is in the army not in physics. They behaved badly there, and the men the directors made me a virtual slave to some woman who had nothing to do with physics or science and worked as career advisor in physics. She was a youngster in sex with one of the directors. Now I know sex is a petty and common offense, but I emphasize they used high-profile advertisement as providing great opportunities for women. In truth all they wanted was that sex thing. Providing a eugenically cleansed environment where the man-made concepts that will induce women to study physics. Men got little help and women got nothing. You can ask other people who are physicists if they got anything out of that place. I did not and this is my story. What Dr. Edge told me, which ended up a tape of out phone conversation, is the following. Dr. Edge, who was born in 1932 was Professor Emeritus of the University of South Carolina and was originally from the University of Cambridge. He told me there was an identical policy at the English and American Institutes of Physics. This policy was that if a woman tries to share her intellectual interests with a man, the Institute would make sure she did not get anywhere with her physics career. The Institute of Physics had already made sure I did not get anywhere in my physics career. Well Dr. Edge started to mentor other women with book writing and all sorts of things. I knew he would have done that for me as well if there had not been a new eugenic policy. I felt hurt shocked angry and jealous. I knew he removed me from friendship even though he never said a word. I had to be removed from the university system. I had to be excluded. I was now on my own. I was never going to agree to stay around in a system where men would hit me on the head if I spoke to a man. I was never going to act as a sexual aid to women to help them bridge their bedroom personalities to the non-sexual physics study, by sharing my flesh so to speak. By providing a woman environment, by providing smooth women portions like the cryptocurrency smooth love portions. We have almost covered the reason why this tape which exposes the Institute of Physics policy would be of dire interest to the police. I can infer that the British Home Office relies on the Institute of Physics for their ideas about women. The Institute of Physics can be treated like a university in that it has some very learned people. They are from universities. They have the potential to birth eugenic ideas or pass them on from the universities. Removing someone based on sexual orientation or not preferring women is against UK employment law, which strives for great equality and fairness. This fairness has to go disappear when eugenics is about to deliver a paradise to women. This concludes the explanation of the police sabotage of my second piece of evidence from online storage. Thank you for visiting Chapter 4. I hope to see you again in Chapter 5.